Hi, uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm uh, Sumana. I'm talking to you from uh, India, and it's a great pleasure to share my work in the European uh, sector of uh, IUSSI. In today's talk, I'll be sharing some information about nest architecture and its relevance to nest choice during colony relocation in a tropical ant, Diacama indica. Nests are very important for a whole range of organisms, including this dollar bird in this beautiful image. In this case, the nest is made inside the hollow of a tree and nests in general provide a safe place to rest and to raise the next generation. It is a place to store resources and it is a place to get away from predators and parasites. I am interested in the nests made by a particular social insect by this ant, Diacama indica, which is the focal species for our study. This is a one centimeter black ant that is found in India and Sri Lanka, possibly in Japan as well. It's a primitively eusocial ant. It is monomorphic and lacks a queen caste. It belongs to the subfamily Ponerinae, and the colony sizes of the species ranges from 12 to 264, and on average, 95 individuals constitute a colony. For working on this species, we typically bring colonies back to the lab and mark them with enamel paint on different parts of their body to be able to uniquely identify the individuals and the behaviors that they perform. This is the region of the world from which I'm talking and the region from which we are conducting this work. The state of West Bengal within India and the red dot indicates where Iser Calcutta, our institute is located. Many evenings, we have such wonderful images in our backyard and the ants live here and we live together with these ants right in our vicinity and hence we get a chance to work on these ants in its natural habitat as well as within our laboratories. In this part of the globe, monsoon brings about a great change in the abiotic conditions because of the great deal of rainfall that occurs in this area during monsoon as indicated by the gray line in the first panel. The rest of the year, there's hardly any rains. The temperature keeps fluctuating and during post monsoon, it gets a bit cooler, but otherwise it hovers around 28 degrees centigrade. For subterranean creatures, a combination of this high temperature and a lot of rainfall is bound to cause changes to their life history. We were curious to see how Dicama indicum adapts to these changes. So as a first step, we wanted to understand what is the nest architecture of the species? And then we wanted to see what are the adaptations to the nest structure that these individuals do in response to the monsoons. And in the next stage, we wanted to examine if relocating colonies care about the architectural features of their new nest. In order to understand the nest, the home of these diacoma indicum nests, Kushankur Bhattacharya, my student, started working with aluminum casts by making aluminum casts for over 70 colonies across different habitats. The entrance of the colony looks like what is shown in the image over here. And if we were to pour in molten aluminum, we will get an idea of the three-dimensional structure within their nests. And as you can see, there is an entrance tunnel, there is a chamber and a secondary tunnel. Very simple nests. And what we found is that the structure, the various parameters within these nests did not change significantly across the seasons. So pre-monsoon, monsoon and post-monsoon nests as indicated by the red, green and blue dots in this three-dimensional principal component analysis shows to you that they're all clustered together 
and there is no significant differentiation between these nest parameters, the architectural features across the different seasons. So colonies live in a single chamber, relatively simple nests that do not change across seasons. When we look at the entrance of the nest, we find that during the monsoon, nests are having a mound around themselves. This mound is made of mud consolidated together with some vegetation and it makes a three-dimensional structure. These are found mostly during monsoons. In addition, nests are found at higher elevation during the monsoon as indicated by the gray box and whisker plots in this top panel of the slide. The entrance tunnels are also significantly shorter during the monsoon period as compared to the pre-monsoon period. In the rest of the year, they hardly make any mounts and they're all mostly found in subterranean uh, at very low elevations. So we wanted to know if there is high levels of flooding, given that they're found at higher elevations during the monsoon, if this is a direct behavioral response or is this a passive feature? In order to test that, we brought colonies back to the lab and released them in the box mentioned as B over here and gave these nests a choice between one higher elevation nest and one lower elevation nest with the idea that ants would have to avoid the lower elevation nests at position A here because if B is flooded, then a lower elevation will also certainly be flooded. But what we found is that ants went without any preference to the new nest that is provided at C, which is at higher elevation, as well as to nests at A, which is at lower elevation. So nest flooding does not directly cause colonies to choose nests at higher elevation, but just the lack of availability of subterranean nests might have resulted in ants occupying their nests at higher elevations. This was work that I did together with Dr. Shwetashri Kole, my PhD student. Further, we wanted to understand what is the function of the mounds that are surrounding the nest entrance. We found out that the surface area of the mound is significantly smaller than what is there for the nest entrance itself. This will reduce the total amount of water that can directly fall into the nest. Nest mounds are typically 3.9 centimeters in height, thus increasing the height of the nests and preventing water from entering into these nests. When we closed the nest entrance using a cotton plug and did experiments where we spray water, in the presence of the mound and absence of the mound, we found that the mounds prevent around 30% of the water from entering inside the nests itself. So they acted effectively as levees. Using manipulative experiments where we destroyed the nest mounds, we found out that these mounds are actively maintained by the ants. And when we destroy it, within three days, as you can see in the lower right corner plot, the violin plot, in the treatment cases, colonies rebuilt their nest to the original level within three days when the nest mound was decreased. Based on this, we understood some of the architectural adaptations that these ants do to monsoons. And in the next stage, we wanted to know how do colonies react to these architectural features when they have to relocate from one location to another. Even though colonies invest a great deal of time and effort in their nests, when the colonies get damaged, when the nest gets damaged, or there's a lack of resource in the neighborhood, or if there is high levels of competition from neighborers, then colonies, ant colonies are known to relocate from one location to another. So for these relocating colonies, we wanted to use choice tests to find out the importance of the architectural features. In the slide that I'm showing you now, natural habitat is indicated on the left panel. And the mimicking of this natural habitat uh, parameters of the nest is what we do in the lab using plastic tubes and culture vials, which are coated with plaster of Paris. So using this design, 
we can test individual architectural features and its importance to relocating colonies. We perform several choice tests in which one of the options is an optimal nest and the second option is a suboptimal nest. And we find that entrance tunnel, which is optimal, that is 10.2 centimeters as found in the natural habitat, was not preferred. Only four out of 12 colonies relocated into such a nest, whereas the majority of the colonies went into the suboptimal nest. There was no significant difference for entrance tunnel. And we found that only two parameters, the chamber volume and the presence of a nest mound was important. All the other parameters did not have any significance to the relocating colonies. Hence, to summarize, the nest architecture in Daikama Indicum, colonies are living in single chambered, relatively simple nests that do not change across seasons. Colonies build consolidated nest mounts and maintain them actively as they act as levees. Nest flooding does not directly cause animals to relocate to higher elevations. And we found that only chamber volume and the presence of mounds at the entrance are features which are of interest to relocating colonies, while other features like nest entrance, tunnel, the entrance diameter, the secondary tunnel is not of importance to the relocating colony. So I would like to live with the concluding thought that characterization of what occurs in the natural habitat is essential to first understand the challenges that species face and control experiments in the laboratory using these features which are meaningful to the organism is essential to understand how species overcome the challenges that they face. Thank you for your time and attention and interest in the work with Dakama Indica. If you have any questions, I will be happy to take it. And if you're interested in gathering more information about the work that we do in our laboratory, please visit our lab page. Bye.